Okay, finally, lesson three on correlation for S1. And uh, man, this is going to be the best one by mile because I just know that, like me, you love coding. Um, coding is back, yes, because you can code a normal set of data to do something with it, uh, to find out the mean or the standard deviation, if you should wish. Um, you can do the same thing with bivariate data, you'll be pleased to hear. So if we have data set X and Y, like uh, in this table here, you could define two other variables, your coded data. Um, P could depend on X, P could be X minus A divided by B, A and B are just two constants. Um, and Q is defined based on Y, so Y minus another constant divided by another constant. <coughs> um, and the good news here is that when you have coded data, um, and you find out the product moment correlation coefficient, so R, which in this chapter is basically the main thing that we're going to calculate, um, it's the same for the coded data as it would be for the original data. Okay, and I've said can you think why, and there's no really really on your sheet to to um, to write this, and um, that doesn't matter too much because you know you don't. This isn't the sort of thing that you get asked in an exam, but if you have a look at this graph here. Um, Obviously, in this case here, you would have some sort of positive correlation. So R, <coughs> not perfect, so R isn't 1, but I mean, maybe R would be 0 0.8 or 0 0.7, some kind of quite high number. Now, remember, when you're coding data, you're basically taking the data, and the first thing you do, like in this example here, which we'll come to, is you subtract something from all the x values. So, if you can imagine taking your all your data, and just shifting it all to the left, right? Because you've subtracted something from all your x values. The graph, the shape of the graph is actually exactly the same. So it should be obvious there that the relationship, the strength of the relationship between whatever's measured on this axis and this axis is exactly the same, not changed. Let's get rid of that. Oops. <coughs> um, and that's for the subtracting part. Um, obviously, the same for y. If you subtract something from every y value, it just moves the graph down not going to affect the strength of relationship. And when you divide by 5 or whatever, um, well, basically that would be a stretch parallel to the y-axis where it actually gets squashed up. So maybe something like this. Okay, So that would be maybe dividing all the y values by 2. I don't know whether it's obvious to you, but maybe you can see that really just by squashing it up you haven't changed the quality of the relationship between the two variables they still lie very close to a straight line it's just that the scale has changed so basically all you're doing is just changing the scales on your graphs um, so that's just an illustration of why you don't need to change when you code data and you work out uh, the product moment correlation coefficient that's your answer you don't need to change it afterwards um, okay so we're going to do this example um, <clears throat> and I think actually it's all on the next page, so let's go there. So we've been given um, a set of data. There are six pairs of bivariate data, X and Y, and we're given the coding that we're supposed to use here. Oop, let me switch to a pen. And thankfully, uh, they've done most of the work for us here. Um, they've coded X values, these X values here. All six of them have become these P values. Q, uh, the Y values here, they've done the first four to give us these four key values, but they've not done these ones, so we're going to need to code this data, and then that will allow us to populate these fields here. <coughs> so, to work out what Q is here, this corresponds to um, the value of 360 for Y. So, Y is 360, let's see if I can squeeze it in down here, 360 minus 300 divided by 5 using that coding. So 60 divided by 5, that's 12. So 12 goes in here. Similarly, uh, when y is 380, um, we can do the same thing. We end up with 16. I'll let you double check my working if you like. Um, and then now we can just fill in all the bits of information. We need all the same sort of sums, except instead of x's and y's, it's p's and q's, but it works just the same way. Um, so to fill this in, obviously 12 squared 144, 16 squared is 256, um, PQ here, so 3 times 12 is 36, and 18 
times 16, I'm sure you're all doing this in your heads, is 288. <coughs> so we need all of these totals. Okay, these are all bits of information that we need um, to work out uh, the product moment correlation coefficient. So if we sum these columns, I'll do it for you here, we get 59. From adding up these values, we get 667. From adding up these ones, and adding up these ones, we get 600. Um, so now we're just going to work out SPP, SQQ and SPQ and um, very similar to the calculation at the end of lesson 2. Um, so feel free to just pause it, and try it yourself and then you can sort of fast forward and check that you get the right thing or if you want to just watch as I go through it that's fine too. Um, so first of all we work out SPP Okay, so from the definition, it's the sum of all the p-values squared minus the sum of all the p-values squared divided by n. So sigma p squared, that's uh, 737. Sigma p is up there, that's 55. So 55 squared, and it was divided by 6. That's how many bits of data we had. That comes to 232.8 three recurring. <coughs> um, it's good to keep your data as accurate as you can so if you get, uh, if you don't get a recurring decimal just write down you know, four or five decimal places to make sure you've got enough accuracy for later on. Uh, SQQ, very similar definition, sum of all the, oops, all the Q values squared eek, um, minus the sum of all the Q values, that's better, squared divided by n. Sigma q squared is 667 minus where's sigma q? 59 squared over 6 and that comes to 86.83 recurring. So we're almost there. Last uh, little bit SPQ. So I need to work out the sum of all the PQ values and subtract sum of P times sum of Q divided by N. So 634 minus 55 times 59 divided by 6. And there we get 93.16 recurring. That's the trouble with having six bits of data, you get lots of recurring decimals. Anyway, that's three bits of information that I need to work out R. So R is SPQ divided by the square root of SPP times SQQ. So 93.16 recurring divided by the square root 232.83 times 86.83 recurring. Now I've got this value in my calculator so I'm just going to use ants for that. For the other ones I'm just going to type them in as a decimal and I'm just going to put in a whole load of threes at the end. Then I know that my answer is supremely accurate. Uh, okay, found my calculator now. I've worked this out. Um, this comes to 0 0.655 to three significant figures. Um, now that's it for this sheet. I mean, just to interpret what this means, hopefully you'll have figured out that that means there's a positive correlation between P and Q, which therefore means that between X and Y there is a positive correlation. Um, still rather depressing and meaningless because it, the question didn't tell us what X and Y are, so not really learned anything. Um, but it's a fairly strong correlation. It's not perfect, but 0 0.655, that's that's quite a high number so that's quite a good correlation which suggests that there could be a relationship to investigate. Um, that's it, that's the last lesson on correlation. Hope you enjoyed it and um, see you again soon.